Today we're starting up this variable capacity communicating unit made by York. This is a split heat pump. This is the outdoor section. We're gonna be going over some tips for commission. Wanna make sure that if you sell or install or service this type of equipment that you know how to wire it. That way you don't run into some issues that I've ran into in the past when wiring this type of equipment. And also we're gonna go over why I choose this type of equipment to install for this project. It's very, very important that you know why I choose this variable capacity equipment. Let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Before we do that, definitely hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know exactly what I'm doing. If you want more videos, check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. Let's go ahead and take a look at the outdoor unit and the wiring, then we'll go in and look at the HX thermostat and then also the indoor air handler. All right. So this right here is the outdoor unit, and this is a pretty large unit. It's actually a four ton. And you can see up here is the master communications board. And we have our little terminals here for our thermostat wiring. And you can see there's only three wires. There's not a fourth wire. I didn't choose to hook up the R. If you hook up the R, you may have issues. Uh, you'll actually definitely have issues. You'll blow this board. This is the master communications board, okay? You don't want to end up blowing the board, okay? So definitely don't hook up the R wire, all right? Hook up the common the A plus and the B minus. You can see that right there. That is your first tip, okay? Do not hook up the R wire, okay? Now, this is where our power wire comes in right here. And we've got our reactor, we've got our inverter board, and this is what drives that three-phase compressor. These are actually the wires that go to the compressor. You can see U, V, and W, okay? Now, there's great resources online to learn more is actually York has um, some training that you can do online. You need to check that out as well. HVAC Navigator. Look at this. This unit holds 17 pounds. Now, something else I want to tell you is this unit has pressure transducers. You can see right here is the suction pressure transducer and the discharge pressure transducer. Okay. So if you ever have a fault, and it refers to the transducers and it says your suction pressure is out of range your your um, discharge pressure is out of range then you may need to take these screws out swing this panel out and you may need to check those transducers that are inside the unit i've had to replace one or two because the harnesses they become loose and uh, then they get water in them and corrode the pins so definitely want to keep that in mind. Let's go inside. Let's take a look at the air handler now. And we're going to go ahead and get this thing started up on camera. And I'm going to show you this display here. We're going to get this thing running. All right, let's go inside. All right, so this is the indoor air handler here. We have the coil. We have an EEV down here. It's an electronic expansion valve, not your typical thermostatic expansion valve. And this right here is where my wiring comes in for my thermostat wires okay this is communicating thermostat wires you can see i've got four wires in here i've got my a plus i've got my b minus i got my c and then i've got my red and i have my red right here i have my float switch in series with my red see i've broken that wire here all right and that is because we've got a pan that our unit sets in and this float right here will cut the 24 volts so that it shuts the unit down. If we have a drain issue, if we have some type of refrigeration issue that causes the cool to freeze up, any type of water issue, okay? So that's the reason we have that. Now you can see that I have bundled all these wires together right here, my four wires that I'm using, my A plus, my B minus, my red and my C. And the reason I did that is because there's not enough room underneath these terminal, this terminal right here to put all those wires. So what I do is I actually just run one wire for each in the terminal, each section uh, for the A plus, the B minus, the common and all that. And then I tie everything together right here. And I think that's the way you should do it. I don't think you should run all these wires into here. Uh, that's just not going to work. You're not going to have enough room for that. Okay. Uh, so that's the way you should do it. I think it's going to be better for you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the thermostat. This right here is the heater kit. I've got a 50 and a 40 and we've got number six wire. 
uh, for both of those breakers. Uh, that way we've got plenty, plenty of wire. Now right there's our motor. And then we've got heat pump and AC. We've got heat, cool, delay, and adjust. Usually I put delay on B. Uh, you don't really have to mess with this. Uh, you're gonna set everything on your HX thermostat, okay? So let's go take a look at that thermostat. Uh, thermostat's not yet mounted on the wall because of course we got to finish some painting before we mount it. Uh, it's pretty easy to take the thermostat loose. Look at this, we've got four connections. Now this thermostat right here can be 24 volts or communicating, but the unit cannot. It can only be communicating. Uh, we have A plus, we have B minus, we have C and R. That's our 24 volts, our common and our red. All right, so pretty simple how to hook that up. Let's go ahead and turn our breakers on and get some power to this thermostat. All right, so we got all the power on to the outdoor and the indoor unit. We're gonna go check our thermostat in a minute, but I wanna show you, it says standby. Isn't that awesome? It's in standby mode. You can actually click menu and you can check out equipment status, uh, communications, lost. System master communications loss. Oh, equipment status. Okay, got a little bit of an issue already. Looks like I need to go through and make sure. Uh oh, we got a frowny face too. Uh oh. So this control kind of has a, a nice little smiley face if it has a good response and if something's wrong, it's just for you get a frowny face. So I need to check this out. Let's go inside and take a look at the thermostat now. All right, so thermostat says auto setup. Press next to begin. So searching for controls, indoor equipment type. So you're gonna go through this auto setup, really easy. And I've also had some of these thermostats where once I get it started up, it has a fault. But after I connect to the internet and update, then the fault goes away. We may have the same thing happening. Indoor equipment stages. Two. Fan on with W. Heater kit. Okay. Outdoor equipment type, searching for controls. Awesome. Oh, already found it. Variable speed. Defrost temperature. Heat pump lockout. Do we want to lock the heat pump out? Nope. All right, do we want efficiency or comfort? I think we want comfort, my friend. That matters more to me. This is an efficient piece of equipment already. All right, setup process. Register your thermostat, remote access, download the Google, okay. I have the app already, so, all right. Oh, programmable. We're gonna go to non-programmable. All right. All right, let's go ahead and go to home. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on. We're gonna get it running and cooling. And, uh, you can do max if you want, max cooling. I'll go ahead and do that. We'll go back outside. We'll take a look at the outdoor equipment status now. Super important tip that I have to tell you is you gotta make sure that your EEV valve, all right, that meters the refrigerant, that controls the metering of the refrigerant, you gotta make sure that it's powered. You gotta make sure not only it's plugged in right here, okay? But you've also got to make sure that it's powered up, okay? Because if it's not powered up, that means that you're not going to be pulling a vacuum through this indoor coil, okay? You're just going to be pulling a, a vacuum through your line sets. And that is not going to be good, okay? So if you're going to do your triple evac, you're going to add your nitrogen, you're going to pull your vacuum, you got to make sure your EEV valve is plugged in and you got to make sure that it's powered. And that is one tip that you need to know when you're doing a startup on one of these communicating units. Same thing with a split gas unit. You're gonna have to make sure that the EEV valve is plugged in, okay? And if we had a furnace, our furnace would be on the our bottom here and our, our coil would usually be on top and we would still have an EEV valve with a plug and 
we would have to make sure that it was plugged in. All right. All right, you can hear this thing cranking up. Nice. Our indoor air handler, the fan is starting to run. We got our outdoor section running. Look at that, suction pressure is 144, suction temperature 71, sub cooling is one degrees, High. head pressure is 273. Now we're displaying all of our running parameters. We're monitoring, we got our voltages, our watts. It's awesome. Menu, equipment status. We got a smiley face. Look at that smiley face. Doesn't that make you happy? That's awesome. So we're running now. We're displaying superheat and subcooling. So we want subcooling to be around 10. We want superheat. For me, I want around 10 to 15. And our faults are gone now. So we're running happily. Make sure your valves are open. Got to make sure your valves are open. That's definitely a tip you need. Make sure all your connections are tight. Get your meter, check the incoming voltage. Make sure you got good voltage. Fixing to close up this outdoor unit. Let's go inside. Let's take a look at the thermostat. All right, looks like we're displaying Date and time, fan is on, it's 77 degrees in here. Humidity is 83% right now. Outdoor temperature is 84. Love this thermostat. Also, you can use the app, so you can actually have this thermostat display on your phone through the app and control this thermostat from anywhere you want. So it's pretty awesome. Indoor fan is ramping up nicely you can hear it love this custom built ductwork by the way awesome there's the filter right there let's go take a look at the outdoor unit again all right suction pressure is 150 head pressure is 285 sub cooling is coming up nice let's take a look at the schematic here you have this these two screws also, so if you don't want to take this whole panel off, just this section, then you can actually see this display. You don't have to hook your gauges up to check pressures on this equipment. That's really cool. Let's take a look at our schematic. And it shows us our inverted drive here, our filter board, and then this right here was our reactor. That right there is our filter board, kind of smooths out the voltage. Uh, we've got our outdoor fan motor, outdoor fan motor controller, because we have variable speed. Uh, we've got our EEV valve. Zoom in a little bit here. We've got our pressure transducers, suction and discharge. And they plug in right here on the board. All right, there's the variable speed control board. Really cool equipment. You can actually enter service mode. On this equipment, you can clear faults and you can run this unit in test mode. You can test the heating, you can test the cooling. So really cool. Love this type of equipment. Now let me talk about why I use this. All right, ready to turn the equipment off. There's auto mode, it's really cool. Emergency heat off. I'm gonna show you one thing before we end this video. Well, before I talk about why I use this equipment. If you wanna go to service mode, you see how it doesn't do anything? Uh, on the thermostat, you can actually go to settings and then click service for more than five seconds. One, two, three, five. Look at there. Oh, look at that. So then you can change some settings here. All right. I want to show you that as well. All right. Good deal. The reason I chose this York Variable Capacity Communicating Split Heat Pump for this home and the heating and cooling needs here for this project is because this is a foam insulated house. See that right there? That right there is foam insulation. I always choose to go with variable capacity or I always try to admonish the homeowner to go with variable capacity 
when they have a foam house. Why? Because it's very tight, it's insulated very well, you don't have a lot of infiltration from inside to outside, so you need a unit that doesn't just run for 10 minutes. You need a unit that runs most of the day, and these units run 6 to 12 hours a day, and that's great because I can not only heat and cool the home really nicely, but I'm also able to fight and combat high humidity. I'm able to uh, make sure the humidity doesn't rise above 60% uh, ranges, and I'm able to have airflow, lots of airflow, and that's great for a home that is foam. Foam houses are great. You're able to save a lot more money. You don't have as much energy consumption because, well, you don't have your unit running way more than it needs to, but you have to have the right equipment because if you don't have the right equipment, if you don't have variable capacity, you're gonna have to have a dehumidifier. And I actually recommend with a foam house, you get a dehumidifier anyways, just to make sure that you have redundancy. And that's why I love these units. I've actually installed a lot of uh, York variable capacity, YZV models, not just the heat pumps, but also gas units for foam houses because they work great. I appreciate all my viewers, everybody that's watched the video. Thank you so much. Definitely comment below. Let me know where you're from and let me know who you are. And if you learned something in today's video, comment below. Let me know what you learned. I really appreciate everybody. Thank you so much for watching.